Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, make us worthy to enter your house with diligence, to knock at your door with confidence, and to worship you in your sanctuary with sincerity. Answer us with kindness and respond to our petitions from the treasury of your mercy. Then we shall glorify you with joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Oh, wash me completely from my iniquity and clean me from sin. My transgressions truly I know them. My sin is always Yes, you delight in sincerity of heart, in the secret that you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Restore me to the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. I shall teach transgressors your ways, that sinners may return to you. <clears throat> no delight, burnt offering for me would not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the chalice of salvation which was filled on Golgotha. Sinners drank from it, and they were pardoned with the blood of forgiveness that poured forth from the cross. All people were marked and escaped from death. As this chalice, united to his holy body, shall be blessed and consecrated for the pardon of faults and the forgiveness of sins for his flock, we raise glory, honor, and to the good one on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, our God, in your great and unspeakable love for all people, you became our sacrifice on Golgotha. By offering yourself, you pardoned the sin of the world. You enabled weak and sinful people to receive your body and life-giving blood. You have made us worthy of offering you acceptable sacrifices. In memory of your saving passion and glorious resurrection, you have given us this sign for the purification of our souls and bodies. With the prophet David we cry out and say, I shall receive the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Merciful Lord, we now implore your goodness to consecrate this chalice mixed with wine and water through the holiness of its union to your sacred body. 
May it become a chalice of thanksgiving and salvation for all those who drink from it and are purified. May it become a chalice which is a pledge of new life for us. May it become a chalice which unites us to the guest of your banquet. May it become a chalice which opens to us the gates of your heavenly kingdom. May it forgive our faults and pardon our sins. Through it may we share with the faithful departed in the joy which will never end. We raise glories, our voices, to thank you, O Christ. Through and with you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadishat Allah Kadishat Khayalaton O Kadishat Lo Mohyuto Mishihodest Levente Lo Hofain Itracham Allah Kadishat Allah Kadishat Khayalaton O Kadishat Lo Mohyuto Meshichodest Leb Teich Lo Hofayn Yitracham Allah Kadishat Allah Kadishat Hayatun O Kadishat Lo that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. Amen. <coughs> with great honor, Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. By this action he made known favor pass from Israel. Host of angels stood in awe and in fear beheld the sight. With great honor, Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. Angels sang our Savior's praise as they stood around his people. Lord, save us. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without no one, 
without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one is deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled, so that no one be an immoral or profane person like a soul who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted the inherit of his father's blessing, he was rejected because he found no opportunity to change his mind, even though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not approached that which could be touched in a blazing fire and a gloomy darkness and a storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them, for they could not bear to hear the command. Even If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath a day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked a pilot that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and they broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not one bone of it shall be broken. And again in another passage it says, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. Follow peace with all men, with holiness, without which no man shall see God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This year, by the coincidence of calendars, it works out to, according to the Gospel of St. John that this is Parashkeve. This is the day of the preparation. This evening, the Jews will celebrate the Passover. Just the way the calendars have worked, they don't always correspond this way. And St. John pointed out, because our Lord celebrates a Passover, that's for a whole conference on a Wednesday night when we have classes, on the use of two calendars, at least two calendars, among the Jewish groups at the time of our Lord. Which is why our Lord celebrates the Passover, but the priests are celebrating and the people who follow the temple calendar are celebrating Passover on Friday night. But St. John, who writes the gospel decades later, wants everyone to understand this, that our Lord, as he's dying outside the city, 
The lambs are being slaughtered in the afternoon for the preparation of the Passover meal. He wants us to understand that aspect of lamb. Which is why in our Syriac prayers through Safro and Ramsho, we have continual references to our Lord who consumes the lamb at the Passover, but who also then becomes our land and becomes our Passover. So St. John, writing decades later, wants us to know the calendar coincidence that takes place on Good Friday. Now what St. Paul does in this letter to the Hebrews, to those who are wavering in the faith because of persecution, he starts out by making a reference, an allusion, it's not a direct quotation, but to the prophet Isaiah. Let those whose hands are kind of weak at their sides and their knees that are listless, let them raise their heads in joy. So St. Paul makes a reference to this, although he's not directly quoting it, on this listlessness that can come in the spiritual life, especially when life is hard. Last night we considered the question of the presence in the Eucharist. And what our Lord is confiding to us is to move us towards the fact that it is spirit to spirit, ultimately, that salvation is found. The, this, um, the sacred mysteries contain this reality but they're visible to us, we see them, we touch them, we can hear them. It's why this liturgy today is so barren. It's not just because it's Good Friday, it's because this is the most ancient text that we have in the Syriac tradition. So we have no introductions, no blessings in the middle. You basically have the, the original cut to the bone structure that we then over the centuries kept adding onto and making more and more flourished and ornamented. But in this reading, St. Paul is reminding us of the reality which remains to us invisible, even under persecution, even when life is hard, even when it may not be persecution from the outside, it may just simply be difficulty within our lives, our health, situation with members in our family, but he's saying that the invisible reality is always present to us. And we mustn't forget that. Which is why, when you look at the section here, verses 12 and 14 are dealing with the idea of keep your desire focused. Know what you're actually doing here in the gospel. What you're doing with the faith. The next couple of verses, then he gives an image of Esau. He says, don't be like the one who just because that afternoon his belly was growling and he was hungry and his brother happened to be cooking some stew, he sold his birthright. He sold his entire heritage that he should have received from his father because he's hungry. He just simply didn't think and to foresee the heritage of family, the lineage of blessing from his father, his grandfather, which was connected with the Messiah. And just because he came in from hunting one day and was hungry, he's like, oh, what is a blessing? He even says, literally, what is a blessing to me? I'm hungry. Yes, fine, you can have it. Just give me something to eat. And St. Paul uses it as an image because in the present moment when things are difficult, how many people fall away like Esau? And he says, but you must stand in fear. Remembering that when Esau, at the end of his father's life, went to try to retrieve this blessing and to get it back as his right as firstborn, even with tears and wailing and lamenting in front of his father, it's never given to him. So St. Paul reminds us then your focus has to always be there upon the invisible. That we can't always see it and it doesn't always seem to be present to us. Many times we seem to be left totally alone. How many times we hear from people as their excuse, I can't believe in God who allows little children to die. Well, if that is the sum total of your reasoning, it's going to be very difficult to get through life. Why believe in a state? Why follow laws? The same state also allows children to die because you can't do anything for them. And St. Paul is saying you have to remember that there is a goal in that physical, that invisible reality to which we are going, which is why the last lines of this section of this chapter 12 of the letter to the Hebrews is about the spiritual exodus. We have been called out of the fallen world. 
We are not members of a fallen world who happen to do religious stuff on occasion. We have been called out of the world to form a different humanity, which again is why it transformed the Western pagan world, because they understood this. It's the meaning of the word in the Latin, the ecclesia, those who are called out. It's not just assembly. It's assembly because why do they assemble? They assemble because they are called. And St. Paul says, you have not approached something that you can see. He makes an image of Mount Sinai. You've not approached a mountain that was crashing with lightning and thunder. And to hear the voice of God booming off of the mountain with Moses on the top during the Exodus. He says, you've not been brought to that. You've been brought to something so much more important, which is God himself. That's what you have been called to. And in that calling, you have been assembled this way. And why it's linked today on Good Friday, the day of the crucifixion, is because if you had stood there on Golgotha and saw our Lord hanging on the cross, you'd see nothing except a man who is being executed as a criminal. And so where is the faith? If we don't see the invisible, if we don't have that focused desire of faith, then we run like all the apostles ran. And in fact, the only person at at Calvary, as we've mentioned before, who believes, who sees in that focused desire, the invisible, is the mother of God. The other people who are there are there out of affection, and that's very noble, but they don't believe that this beloved friend of theirs who is lying there has been scourged and is bleeding profusely, hanging off of this cross, barbarically from these nails, is going to rise again from the dead in three days. They don't believe it. Only the mother of God believes it, the mother of the light. And so, on a day in which we have this ancient liturgy, St. Paul reminds us that you belong to part of what is a spiritual exodus, You do not fundamentally belong to this world. And as long as you keep that focus, he says to the the Hebrews, you will remain faithful. But if, like Esau, you simply waver and follow the ways of the world because your stomach or your tummy is growling, then beware, because you may be just simply getting rid of and losing what is actually belonged to you by your heritage as being Christian. And he says the second beware is that remember that when Esau tried to get it back, that worldly man he's called, the man of the world, that when he tried to get that heritage back, even with wailing and in tears, he still lost it. And so St. Paul wants us to remain focused and remain within this spiritual exodus so that with the strength that comes from the grace of God and through this signing of the chalice today, we remain always faithful, always stable, and always at peace, come as they say, hell or high water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Itel what my deb head a loho, all what a loho dam had a tayo, twain of suho tayo toho, eul and bite of westwood, hayek no good
forward of all peoples and rejoice, for it absolves those who partake. Behold the chalice which satisfies the thirst of the children of God, for those who drink from it are delivered from the flames of Gehenna. Behold the chalice which was prefigured by the chosen nation, but when Jesus came in person, other nations welcomed him with joy. The honorable priest Aaron prefigured this chalice when he sprinkled the blood of animals to signify the blood of the Lord. The prophet Moses prefigured this chalice by the lamb's blood which he sprinkled in Egypt to deliver the children of Israel.
We present this offering, this commemoration, and this prayer to the everlasting God, the Ancient of Days. Of the living and the dead, for those who are far and those who are near, for churches, monasteries, and convents in every district and region, and for us who are weak and sinful. Though we are unworthy, may you have made us worthy to stand before you and to be remembered in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for those who we remember today, for those who are here with us in faith, awaiting your abundant mercy. For our fathers and our mothers and our brothers and our sisters, for sinners, we present this pure and holy offering to you, O God the Father, Almighty Lord. It is right and just. Yes, O Lord, it is truly right and just that our minds and hearts be always lifted up to the and worthy. 
true and faithful Christians, our brothers and sisters who have asked us, weak though they are, to pray for them. We remember those who are subject to difficulties and who take refuge in you. Visit and deliver them. We pray for this place which God guards and for the peace and spiritual growth of those who live here, and that they may live in prosperity. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember all true Christian leaders who have built churches, monasteries, and convents in all parts of the world. We pray for all Christians in their public activities and services, the clergy and all the faithful, that they may lead holy lives. We pray to you, O Lord. We remember the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. With her, we remember the prophets, apostles, evangelists, disciples, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, the messenger, and the forerunner of our Savior, Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all the saints. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember those who have died and are among the saints, especially those that presented and given us this apostolic faith. We re proclaim the four holy ecumenical councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, Ephesus, and Chalcedon. We remember all our glorious fathers and the faithful doctors of the church who dwell with God. St. James, brother of the Lord, the illustrious apostle, martyr, and bishop. Ignatius, Dionysus, 
Athenaeus, Basil, Gregory, Timothy, Euthanasius, John, and especially Cyril, the Tower of Truth, the Chosen of God, St. Marin, our Blessed Father, St. James and St. Ephraim, both pillars of our Holy Church, and for those who kept the true faith and passed it on to us, we pray to you, O Lord. and to lead them in us to your heavenly kingdom. We pray, proclaim to you three times. <laughs>
Behold the holy chalice from the side of the Father's Son, the living Arbor. From his side, open the cross by a lance. Our thirst is satisfied. Behold, the church tells the priest to carry it above the altar for the pardon of her children. Behold the holy chalice, from it we receive salvation. From it we drink and are made worthy of the pardon of our faults. Behold, today it is accomplished through the ministry of the true priests that all nations are saved. Behold the holy chalice, King David foretold it, stating, I will receive the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Behold, today is completed on the table of life, that mortals are promised eternal life. O oh Lord, you are the pleasing oblation, please stand. You are the pleasing oblation, O oh, offer of yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice, O oh, offer of yourself for your heart. You are the high priest, O oh, offer of yourself for us. Petitions, 
Answer our requests from the abundant treasury of your mercy. Make us worthy to come forward in all purity and holiness, to receive the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We shall praise the glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. We go to page 52, remember. Most of angels have come to stand with us at the holy altar. They sing in chorus and carry Christ the Lamb, sacrificed before us. O come receive him, O saving Lamb of God, who will grant forgiveness.
give you thanks, O living Lamb of God. You came down to heaven, you came down to earth from heaven, clothed yourself with the body of our humanity, and died for the life and salvation of all people. Prophets and kings yearned to see you, but were unable. Yet you let us weak sinners receive you into our hands and to be purified by you. We praise you for your awesome majesty and your great goodness toward us. You are the burning fire carried by our hands and the living ember touched by our lips. Purify, O Lord, the mouths, the lips, and the hands of those who have held this body. Sanctify the bodies, the souls, and spirits of those who have received your blood. Purify their hearts, thoughts, spirits, and all their senses. Mark them with the seal of your holy cross, and place within them your hidden power. O Lord our God, to you be glory now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless and sanctify and forgive and protect the faithful who have participated in this divine sacrifice of the holy mysteries. <clears throat> May God forgive them, their brothers and sisters and the departed. May God save us from confusion and shame before him on the judgment.